Bacula Enterprise Edition to the rescue. Welcome to the Bacula Systems web series. In this video, we'll do a bit of a deep dive into the way we do bare metal recovery in Bacula Enterprise Edition. We'll demonstrate using a Windows 10 virtual machine for the restore. The process looks almost the same for Linux, so we won't do a separate video for that. The first step we'll go through is to add a new bare metal recovery backup job. In previous videos, we've demonstrated how to add a new client and a new backup job, so I'm going to go through this very quickly and run through the add a new backup wizard. The Windows client has already been added to this Bacula director, and the BMR plugin is included by default on the FD, so there's nothing more to install on that side. We will have to create a new file set that backs up using the BMR plugin. We'll give this one a descriptive name to tell us that we're doing a BMR backup of Windows, and then browse the client to make sure we can connect to it. Next, click on Edit Plugins and find the Windows BMR plugin, and click to add it. You can choose to exclude some drives here. So for example, if you have a drive that's dedicated to your database data that you'll be restoring after the backup of your operating system, you can exclude that from the backup here. Finally, we'll set any file set options that we need. For example, we'll turn on a signature, but you could also exclude files here or turn on deduplication. After this, I'm going to just click through the remaining steps of the wizard and leave a blank schedule because I'll just be running this job manually. I'm also going to enable the auto commit feature in VWeb so that my changes are automatically added to the director. Now that we've created our bare metal recovery job, we can return to the VWeb landing page and run it manually by clicking jobs and then define jobs. I'll select the newly created job from the list and I won't change any of these options because the defaults are all fine. You may notice that it says incremental, but Bacula will know to automatically upgrade this to a full because we don't have a prior full in the catalog already. Now we should see the job start, get a log of the snapshot starting for all of the mounted drives and start seeing files move. I'll fast forward to the end and we can see what the finished job log looks like. Here you can see the finished job log where it looks like we backed up about 28 gigabytes and Bacula reports the job was successful. So now we should be able to do some restores. Bacula's BMR backups allow two recovery modes. You can restore files from them just like a normal Bacula backup, which is what I'll demonstrate first. So even though we have a backup that can restore a whole machine, it is also possible to recover some or all of the files from that machine at the file level and bypass the bare metal recovery process entirely. For database and other application backup and recovery, it's usually best to run your bare metal recovery on the operating system, restore that, and then restore the database with the appropriate database plugin from a separate backup. Since we've covered web restore of files in previous videos, Let's skip ahead and look at the bare metal recovery restore process. You can see here the virtual environment that was used for testing. The Windows 10 machine listed at the top is the machine that was backed up with the BMR backup. And the one at the bottom is a new one I've created with the same specifications and a blank hard disk for the BMR recovery. Next, what we'll do is change the settings and boot from the Bacula provided recovery ISO. Again, the process would be the same in Linux, where we'd be booting from the Linux BMR recovery ISO. And in both cases, it takes us into a minimal operating system with a Bacula client installed that is able to perform the bare metal recovery restore. I'll give this just a moment to boot up, but once it's done loading, we should be in the Bacula bare metal recovery environment. Once booting is complete, you'll be in the bare metal recovery window. From here, you'll choose your language and then enter some information about your Bacula environment. You'll see that it's asking for a rescue client and a rescue password. I haven't yet configured that, and so we'll go do that in a moment. You can pre-configure all of these settings in your BMR recovery ISO so that when it boots up, everything is already populated. Now let's head back to BWeb into the configuration mode and quickly add the necessary client and console entries so that the BMR client can authorize with the director and begin the restore. Fortunately, we have a very easy wizard to set this up in BMR. It's called the Setup BMR Console Wizard, and you can simply give it a name and a password, and VWeb will create the necessary entries and reload the director. 
Here we can see the new console that was created and the new dummy client that was created to allow the BMR recoveries to happen. This can allow you to provide much more granular control and restrictions if you want to have certain users or departments have access to do BMRs on their own. And here we can see the recovery window populated with all the necessary information about our rescue client, rescue console, and the director. When you click next here, the client inside of the BMR session connects to the director and brings up the selection list for the clients that are available for recovery and the jobs for that client. Here you can see I only have the one job to restore that I just ran, but you normally may have quite a few in this list. Next, Bacula will begin to build the information necessary to run the BMR recovery. The first window is the partition window. The left pane should show a matching set of partitions from the source and destination disk, and on the right, a choice of which of the backed up mount points you want to restore. You can also do your partitioning manually here, but it is not recommended. In the next window, we can verify that our backed up objects, such as Linux mount points and Windows drive letters, are going to be restored to the correct partitions. If they're not correct, you can swap them around here. Once you're satisfied that everything is in the correct place, click Next to begin the restore. The restore process will run, and when it's complete, you should see a pop-up window that looks like this to say that the restore is successful. You can view any messages here to see if there are any errors in the backup process. As you can see, I had some password issues initially, but otherwise everything looks fine. We'll click Finish and Reboot, and this should bring us back into a working system. And here you can see the boot process for our restored Windows system. I've sped up the video just a bit so that we can see me log in, and it looks like everything is working. If you have any questions about how bare metal recovery can help you with your disaster recovery plans, please don't hesitate to contact us. And I hope this video has been helpful. A free trial of Bacula Enterprise Edition is available from our website, baculasystems.com, and includes guided exercises walking you through different operations within Bacula Enterprise. For more videos, please see and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thank you for watching.